Okay, here I go again. You got Isaiah 45. I'm going to read it. And a little bit of 46, another thing. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, I will loose the loins of kings, to open before him the two leave gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the brass bars of iron. And I will give these treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. When you guys read about Jacob, especially in the prophets, that's where I've studied the most of it. I'm sure there's more evidence of this, this in... Um, well, because of the story, and you might see it in, in like Kings and Chronicles and stuff. I don't. I haven't studied that as near as much, and not for a long time. But the prophets, I do, and Revelations quoting a boatload of it. And I don't know why people can't see how clear this is. Jacob is talking to the hundred and forty-four thousand. When you see Jacob in here. In the Old Testament, it's talking about the 144,000. Israel, my elect. That's the woman that goes in the wilderness. The man-child is Jacob gets caught to the throne. I'm just watching a, I was showing my wife, a pre-trib rapture pastor who's been studying for like 50 years. 50 years. And at first, when the church wasn't nearly as apostate, he saw that the Christians are going to go into tribulation. And then, as time went on and a church got more apostate, his eyes were opened. And he went into the stronger delusion that they're going to get raptured to a galaxy far, far away. And they don't take account any, any, anything behavioral in the prophetic as to who's chosen for what. They don't rightly divide the different groups. You know, Munker, I appreciate what you're doing, but can you do it when I'm finished the video? Because that's kind of noisy. Do you mind? Thank you. Anyways, it's tricky for me to put the turkey one in. I'll get it for you. Yeah. So I'll just leave it out here for now. Okay. I'll do the kids' one. Well, I'll just maybe just wait till I'm done. Do your room. That would clean your room. That would make me happy. So what was I saying? Oh, the pre-trib rapture nonsense. There's a pre-trib rapture. The 144,000 get caught up to the throne, and then they return. And then they judge between the righteous and the wicked. And the great destruction. And they're the, they're the 144,000 is the, the Joel 2 army. The Joel 2 army. So what did you think? And the, the whole reason why it's happening is because of this. So this Jacob, the servant, is going to have a lot of people going against, against those people. Because they're trying to save the people. And the people hate them. But Israel, and they're trying to find Israel. Israel's the ones that are going to no longer, they're going to cast their idols away. That means they're doing their idolatry. They're no longer going to call them by the name of Baal. So in order for them to be calling them by the name of Baal, <clears throat> for prophecy to happen, then they got to be calling them by the name of Baal. And dummies... Dummies come on my video and say, oh, that's the Lord. The Lord is a title. They changed it. They were hiding his name. They're hiding the father's name, but hiding it. But the name of Baal is this Jesus. And it's been going on over and over and over again in history. History. Nimrod, they worshipped his penis. So they erect a, a tree and decorated it. You know, with all their mythology, it changes with all the different, depends on what culture you were in, what era in time, and this dumb era is who it is. It's whoever's spreading the pagan witchcraft to the four corners of the earth. This ritual, and they're doing it against this whole entire book. For Jacob, my servant's sake, 
So a servant, this is the bond servants or the servants in Revelation. They're the only people that are going to understand that book. <coughs> they fulfill the royal law. That's what makes them servants. And the Christian church doesn't even know what the royal law is. In fact, as soon as you perform the royal law, they hate those who rebuke in the gate. But the, those who rebuke in the gate are a royal diadem in the hand of the Lord. Dumber than a stack of hammers these people are in the Christian church. You know why they are? In, in the, when, they, when these pastors, these wolves in sheep's clothing, okay? They, then they're going to look like sheep, you guys, okay? But inside, they're ravenous wolves. And when they, when they search prophecy, you know why they search prophecy? To look like a smart guy. They don't do it because they're actually reading what the book says and warning the people. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. Those who are escaped of Israel, the very elect. Watch ye, therefore, and pray. I have even called thee by name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Okay, so what does that have to do with anything? Were you guys awake a few years ago? No. That's why everybody's waking up. And many are called to be Jacob, but only few are chosen. But for Jacob, my servant's sake, he prays out in Isaiah 65 and begs for the people's lives so he doesn't destroy them all. God makes a decision because of his servant's sake not to destroy them all. Well, that's pretty nice because they're all attacking the servants right now. And the evil servants are attacking us too because they were too cowardice to do this work. A bunch of cowards. I see more, I see women that got more courage than some of the men that I, I've met in the past. I've surnamed thee, though thou has not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no one else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, thou hast not known me. This is when he pours out his spirit in the last days, that they may know that from the rising of the sun, the day dawning in your heart, and from the West, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do these things. So, what, how's he do it? People and governments are going to rise up, and they're going to rule over you, and they're going to do terrible things. A lot of it you won't even know is going on. Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Remember, this is all judgment right here. He wants righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. So he created the righteousness, not you. I was talking to my family. Why is the, like you got 10 commandments. Lots of them are obvious out of the 10. You don't murder, you don't kill, or you don't steal because you don't want people to do it to you, right? Well, God has some other rules and they're important. And one of them is the Sabbath day because he didn't want this crap to happen where his word gets trampled. He's looking for us to worship in truth with our ears. What is he really saying? So why did he create the Sabbath? Because that's the Sabbath rest. It re represents the kingdom. So when the kingdom comes in the millennial reign, those who kept the Sabbath will be in the Sabbath rest. This is a new cup. Like it's pretty simple. Don't make any other gods. Well, you're worshiping other gods. Your attention's not on the truth of this God. The one of the Bible, the one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one that created you. No graven image because he knows the nature and the devils are out there deceiving the people. It's so that you, he, he's looking for those that, that believe his word. And when they have the traditions of men, they don't believe his word. 
because his word is against the traditions of men. It doesn't matter what. Like, it, like I say, he could have told us to eat chocolate cake every morning and we'd eat vanilla because we're a bunch of jerks. Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open up. Let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that strives with his maker. Let the potsherds strive with the potsherds of the earth. Let the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou? Or thy work? He hath no hands. Woe unto him that saith to his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons. That's plural. Hello. Concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. Whoops, you okay? You okay? Yeah, I even, my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness. I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, says the Lord of hosts. Okay? And it's a heart condition. You know, whether it's true or not, I'm hearing rumors of China getting a little little antsy to come and play with America. A bitter and hasty nation. Thus says the Lord, the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. <clears throat> they shall come over, they shall come after thee in Chains, they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee, and shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed, and they shall also be confounded. All of them, they shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. We're getting into it here. Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So the foolish things of this world, he's going to confound those who think themselves to be wise. They're the same ones making the idols. For thus says the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Uh, let me just say it this way. What did Yeshua say to me? What did he, what did he say to me? Because I was listening. He says, if you choose to enter into life, then keep God's commandments. That's what he told me right in his book. That's all I needed to hear. He had me at hello. Okay. Once I finally read it, and it, I, you know, we all walk through it. There's no way the church is deceived. Why are they all lying, though? Because you know that. Well, lying, they just, they're just a little wrong. I, you know, nobody's perfect. You start thinking stupid like that. That's not what his book is saying at all. He's saying, obey me, and I'll smarten you up. Who is this? Who is Israel that has this God with this law that makes them so advanced and, and wise? That's the Holy Spirit of truth. It's his spirit. You trust in him and he guides all your paths. Like I got umpteen stories about how he provides for me. For thus says the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. But he doesn't want disobedient children, guys. Otherwise, it turns into this. Your children are getting sacrificed. That not, doesn't mean your particular child, but your neighbors, 
like your people suffering in your country about dark things that are going underground because you guys do Christmas and Easter. It's all satanic. It's witchcraft. It's right from, the, right from hell. Well, you're having a jolly old time. There's children getting sacrificed. That's why Yeshua says when they say to the rocks, this is what I think anyway, when they, when they say to the rocks and the, um, the rocks to fall on us, you, when Yeshua quotes that piece of scripture, he says, don't cry for me, cry for your children. Oh, I'm going to read this verse again. I've got to go back. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. For thus says the Lord that created the heavens. And remember, Israel is 12 tribes. They're scattered into the Gentiles. And there's going to be people that are willing to obey God. And God knows exactly who they are. For thus says the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he shall establish it, he created it, not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there's none else. I have not spoken in secret. He isn't spoken in secret, it's right here. In a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. He didn't say that, he told him to seek him. Not in vain, this is a servant, it's us right now waking up. As long as you overcome, you got to wrestle with the Lord till you get the blessing. Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come draw near together. You, you that have escaped of the nations that have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray to a God that cannot save them. That's the Christmas tree and Jesus, Rome's winter solstice demigod. And that's why Israel will be saved for ignorance sake when it's talking in Romans 11. Without repentance. Because they were deceived by the Gentile church. Because it went to the ways of the Gentiles and they were told not to do that. So yeah, you're part Gentile, but if you understand this book is what makes you an Israelite. So understand that. And they're stubborn ones too. They come in a little later. They're the foolish virgins. And they're ready to open up after the wedding like Luke 12 says. And why? Do you know Why? Because instead of telling the Christians the truth and going looking for their brothers and quit being cowards, they're doing the feasts. So because they're blessing themselves, because what they really think is because they do the feasts, they're going to be saved. Oh, we're smarter than those guys. They, and, and nobody's helping out. They're not telling the truth. Well, they might give you a couple, couple uh, hand once in a while, but they're doing the feasts because they're distracted because... Ephraim has made many altars to sin. Altars shall be unto him to sin. And he starts doing God's sacrifice. The, the, the feasts. Because they're just, oh, well, Judah's going to get saved, so we're going to go hang out with Judah. Judah's in a lot of trouble. Judah's in a lot of trouble for doing the same thing. Right, right now, what's going on is war. War comes to nations. Watch what happens. See, they should have tore down the altars. When they get into their inheritance, Deuteronomy 12 tells you that they're to tear down all the, the altars from around about. Now, you don't know this maybe, but the Christian altars are all pagan. But, so is that mosque. It shouldn't be there either. But what did they do? They trusted the world, not their God. That's why it also says... Once you enter in my land, I don't want to ever hear the name of other gods come out of your mouth. And there's names of other gods all the time, especially Jesus. That's the one that's spoken of right here. And they pray unto a God that cannot save. They have no knowledge that set up their Christmas tree. 
We'll even prove it more here. It gets better. Well, to me, it gets better. I tell ye and bring them near ye. Let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told them from time? Telling them the whole time, no graven images. Nothing above, nothing on the earth, and nothing beneath. That's what Israel was told. Have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and it shall not return. It shall not return in vain. So it's going to happen. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord, I have, have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come and all that are increased against him or incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Bell, bell, now I'm going to 46. And I'm only going to get to one point so I can make an another point. Bell bowed down, Nebo stupeth. Their idols were, were upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy laden. They are a burden unto the weary beasts. They stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob. Here we go again. My servant Jacob. That's the guys that understand the book of Revelation. The servants. O house of Jacob and the remnant of the house of Israel. Do you see there's a end? The remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly. They're born by me from the belly. It's spelt B-O-R-N-E. Okay? Which are carried from the, from the womb. So there's been debate with me in the past, but I'm gonna really hammer it down here with this one. And guess where we're going? Jeremiah 10 isn't about the Christmas tree. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. The remnant of Israel that's gonna listen. Thus says the Lord, learn not the ways of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the, he the heathen are dismayed at them. That's the winter solstice. For the custom of the people, the nations, the Gentiles, are vain. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of his hands, of the workmen, with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, and fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it moves not. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak, mu speak not. They must needs be born. Same word. Because they cannot go. Well, there's this man that I believe. And I'm going to read what he said when he quoted that. Yeshua answered him and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless he be born, he cannot go. Now, Israel did this exact sin. The northern kingdom. And they were booted out. They erected an Asheroth pole and they decorate, decorated it with gold and silver. They even worshipped a serpent on a stake. And they got the boot. So, then. We'll go to 18 here. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Okay? 
Oh, we're not Israel. The, the Gentiles don't get grafted in. You most certainly are, Ephesians chapter 2, 12. But you're not, actually, if you're doing this. Well, because of unbelief, because they didn't believe God's word, they were broken off. And now stand us by faith and not be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches for doing Christmas, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, which is the Ten Commandments. Otherwise, thou shalt be cut off. And if they also, if they abide still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. That's the northern kingdom, you guys. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into the good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not foolish Christian church that you should be ignorant of this mystery it says brethren it's the brethren that are going to understand this which is sisters too so don't get insulted you should be lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the, of the Gentiles be come in and so all Israel shall be saved we just read it. All Israel's going to be saved. That's only one place. You want to go right to it and go do Jeremiah 30 and 31? This is when they're going to cast away their idols? I want nothing to do with this like a menstrual rag. They're no longer going to call them by the name of Baal. So all Israel's calling them by the name of Baal then. Well, you know what I mean. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. What doesn't happen till the end days? There shall come out of Zion a deliverer. This is quoting it. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Okay, so Jacob, my servant. What is that guy going to do? Or guys, guys and girls, what are they going to do? They're going to turn back to godliness. They're going to listen to the royal law. That's what they were told by Yeshua. They're servants. Where else can I prove it? We could go back to another. Yeah, let's go there. I know I probably already done it. You guys have seen it, but why not? Amos 5. You, this is verse 7. You who turn judgment into word, wormwood. See, he, go that way, if you don't mind. Like the door. You who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth. God's righteousness is the Ten Commandments. Seek him that make the seven stars of Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and make the day dark with night that call for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name that strengthen the spoiled against the strong so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebukes and gate and they abhor him that speaks uprightly. has to happen or your Bible's wrong for as much. Therefore, as you tre treading is upon the poor and you take from the, the burdens of wheat, you take him burdens of wheat. ye. You take from him burdens of wheat. You have built houses of hewn stones, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink the wine of them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. 
the unjust steward that repents. They afflict the just, they take a bribe, and they turn aside the poor, they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. The gate is to get into the kingdom. That's your white stone. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. So the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good. You just got permission from God to hate the evil and love the good. And establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God, the, the Lord God of hosts, will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Therefore the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says thus, wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in the highways, alas, 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 what's that? The great city, mystery Babylon. Alas, alas, that great city. Alas, alas, they shall call the husbandmen to mourning and to such that are skillful a lamentation to wailing. That's what's going to happen to, and in all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee. When does he pass through? Saith the Lord, woe unto you <coughs> that desire the day of the Lord, you Christian church. What end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, and went into a house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness? I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of your songs." For I will not hear the melody of, the, of thy vials, but let judgment run down as, a, as waters and righteousness as the mighty stream. Have you offered me unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? But you have borne the tabernacle, your Moloch and your Chion, your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. You gave birth to it. Therefore, I will cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. When, when Stephen brings this up, he says, he uses the same quote, and he says that he's going to send you into captivity to Babylon. Those who are doing the Christmas tree. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any tree near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. Guess he changed his mind after you guys killed his son and trampled the blood of the covenant. You know, while we're here, that was Deuteronomy 16. Here's the prophecy of your Messiah. The Lord thy God, and you were told, the first thing that the Christians were to do, or the Gentiles, for salvation, is to go learn what Moses said about the Messiah. It's taught every, in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Here's one place. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, like thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken according to all that thou desired, all that you people desired of the Lord thy God in Horeb. That's where the life-giving water came from. In the day of assembly, saying, let, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Let me see this, and, and let me, and neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. Daddy, there's only a tiny piece of sugar in here. Okay, ask mommy. What's the great fire? Well, wait. The great fire is going to be his judgment 
Then the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise up a prophet from among their brethren, Yeshua, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command thee. And it shall come to the pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall uh, presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods that cannot save, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken when the prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet has spoken presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Well, guess what? The end days prophets, the way the Bible describes it, you just enter into the work of the prophets. You reap what they sow. You don't predict. God's mercies are new every day. That means you're allowed to repent. That's the good news. Yeshua paid your price, you dummies, so that you could repent. That's why Israel came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because they broke, they broke the commandments and started doing pagan rituals in the land. So they got severity came to them. So Yeshua's death paid the price. And in the meantime, the Gentiles were allowed to come into get grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. Romans 11, Ephesians 2, and it's prophecy. It's also prophecy that the fullness of the Gentiles comes into, and this is the generation of God's wrath for a reason, and there's a remnant of Israel, and there's Jacob, my servant. As we can see, Oh, by the way, so great is the fall of that house. That's Ephraim. So that's the beginning event. Great is the fall of that house. Then the harvest workers, my servants, servant Jacob and Israel, my lact, are going to go through the second exodus and they're going to start gathering the people to fill the seats of the wedding. First Thessalonians chapter 4, those who survive tribulation... And there's reasons for that, especially because they do the feasts. Those who survive the tribulation comfort each other with these words when you see the resurrection. That likely is the fifth trumpet or sixth. And then they stand their lot, I think, in the seventh. And that's the way it, it goes down along those lines. Because even the angel that cast down Apollyon, it says that in Revelation, it says that this angel, this army rises up and it's a, it, he's, he's, uh, it, it makes the wording makes it sound like he's with them and leading them. But if you dig into Strong's Concordance, it actually shows you it's, he, he's against them. And it's a huge, huge army at that point. So I believe that's talking and they, and they are, they're the same uh, Old Testament, I think it's Nahum and and Joel, they got the same appearance as what the Joel army has, but the Joel army we know is 144,000. So the resurrection is just more of the army later on. And remember the wrath of, <clears throat> there's wrath coming out and pouring out. And who administers the wrath of God? The Lord does through his servants. They're going to judge between the righteous and the wicked. They speak often one to another. Now, Book of Remembrance is written for them. Why remembrance? Because they were scattered into the Gentiles until the last days. And if you study Ezekiel 4 and Leviticus 26, it even tells you this. That they're not going to return after the appointed punishment seven times as their punishment, which equals 2,730 years, and they were dispersed in 722 BC. That brings you to 2008. And then the servants start getting called. First hour, second, third, fourth, fifth. The eleventh hour harvest workers are the most important. The last will be first and the first will be last. Because the earlier harvest workers started to get envious. 
So put your listening ears onto that. Because it's already happened. The covetousness. Because they return to their covetousness. And now, reminder, okay? A reminder. If you're already doing the work. Deuteronomy 7. 9 and 10. Know therefore, the Lord thy God, he is a he is God, the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy. Covenant and mercy, they go together. Covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And he repays them that hate him to their face, which is judgment day, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hates him. He will repay him to his face. He who hates him is he who does not do his commandments. He who makes a graven image. Thou shalt not make thee, chapter 5. Thou shalt not me make me or make thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Daddy, can I put this candle on there? Yeah. Thou shalt not make me any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above. So that's going to be a star or anything like that. Daddy, I need Moon. to Moon. I want to light this up. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll do it later. Anything that's a heaven above or in the earth beneath, which would be a tree, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. And the irony of it is Nimrod is also called the fish god. And they would make a, a, like a thing of a fish. And Dagon. <sighs> I don't know. I guess not to make this too long, but I mean, Yeshua quotes Jeremiah 10. We need to be born again. We need to be born of the Spirit. You're not going to get the spirit of truth unless you obey the Ten Commandments. That's why you got to be born of the spirit. He told you. And Acts is Acts 5.32. It's those who obey that get the spirit of truth. That's why I don't, I don't need to make notes to make a sermon. I don't need notes. The Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit's not happy with Mystery Babylon and her many harlots. Come out of her, my people. Think about it. Come out of her, my people. That means my people is in Mystery Babylon. Because she's a whore. Do you mean, you think that, oh, they're having sex? That's what it's about? No, the whoredom of adultery. No graven image. If you guys knew how the prophets worked, you'd understand that. Even when the New Testament's quoting it all the time. It talks about drunkenness, whoredom, adultery, all in the same sentence. Because it depends on what prophet is talking. Because they all talk differently according to the way the Holy Spirit made them talk. They had the power of the Holy Spirit, so they wrote these things down. And they coincide. And they, you have to read scripture line upon line. Here a little, there a little, precept upon precept. It's all about Ephraim, you guys. They're whoredom. I think that's even the way it's mentioned in Hosea. It's whoredom. Hosea is like the easiest book for me to understand about, about the United States of America where Judah and Ephraim dwell together. So where's Judah and Ephraim dwelling together? In Mystery Babylon, which Judah was told in Isaiah 47, 48... To come out of her, my people. Well, it repeats in Revelation 17 and 18. The waters of Judah. Waters is people. Revelation 17 and 18 explains that. Or I think it does there. Somewhere in Revelation it explains that. The waters of many people. Many waters. Because Ephraim is a mixed multitude of people. A mixed multitude means a whole bunch of different nations living in one place. That God gave a chance to. And he's got a remnant of people that he scattered there. He, he drove them there. His hand was in the whole thing the whole time. His hand is in everything. His hand was in World War II. It was in World War II because the 
the Germans put a Christmas tree in the house and then the Jews started doing it. That's why destruction comes and people just don't get it. Your New Testament tells you that too, but it's in Amos 5. I just didn't read that part. The people, I mean, we were just in Romans 11. So what happens after Romans 11? You got 12 and 13. So let's go to 13. Let every, these are Christian people, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be were ordained of God. Ordained of God. You have no, you have no say in the matter. You don't like me? It was ordained of God. Doesn't bother me. He made my face hard against you. Whoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror unto good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power, which is God? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, oh, you better be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that does evil. And you're doing the Christmas tree anyway. It's the whole reason tribulation's coming. This is about tribulation. Render, render for to them or to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, on, um, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, which means to rebuke the sin, come out of her, my people, so they don't suffer the consequences of sin. That's why you got Jacob, my servant, and Israel, my elect. I like this too. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou, hast, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And you know what? It's really, it's not that hard in ways, except for we're living right before we're about to get destroyed and the urgency is heavy and people just aren't, they're just taking it as a light thing. But it's really not that hard if everybody would have done it. I could tell you that. What's so hard about thou shalt not kill? Nobody wants to get killed, so why would you do it to someone else? Yeah, go ahead. Is there, are they all dirty? Yeah. You finished emptying the dishwasher already? Yeah. Oh. Anyways. And that knowing that time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. Daddy. You, you got, well, I, I can't do it right now, honey. I'm busy. Why? This is, this is about being asleep. The drunken, the sleepers. This is the difference between Isaiah, or not Isaiah, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5. What's going on? Okay, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly in the day, not rioting in drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put on, put on ye the Lord Yeshua Messiah and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. 
And that's really what Matthew 24 is talking about. Uh, Paul says it here. Says it where else? Uh, I always talk about. No, Peter. Peter does it. Peter in second second Peter chapter twenty to twenty. Second Peter chapter two verses twenty to twenty three. This is the envying and the strifing, and this is going back to the drunkards of Ephraim. This is such a warning to America. Like much more specifically, because you are already set up. Like even your constitution is about envy and strife. You know, having your way. Like, look at what coveting means. Coveting means you want it your own way. So you're going to argue with the government. That's what's going to happen. That's why that statue got knocked over. That's why they're yelling about abortion. Well, abortion is a consequence of Christmas. That's what it is. That's how come your sin increases. He recompenses the sins under the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Those who hate me are those who set up a graven image. And who's the mo most idolatrous nation? That they're a glass house for crying out loud. They got their Hollywood. Where can I put this? Um... Well, put it upside down in the in the fork tray. So, I saw something at homeschool there, but yeah, last year I I said to the school, I told the school two years in a row when she was in preschool, and then the next year kindergarten, I want nothing to do with Christmas around my kid, and she comes home with Christmas books and and little craft calendars where she's doing Easter, Christmas, and all that crap. And then that was part of the reason, honestly, it was hard on my wife, and I get it, because once it sunk in, at first she could care less, but when you see what the effect it has on your child, <coughs> <coughs> being a man that protects his family and a, and a wife, you'd start saying, oh, we don't do these things, and then these people start to create, like start, things start, will ha start happening to your daughter. You know, she'll be left out and she'll, the parents will be, will look funny at, at, at your kid and at you. And that kind of stuff is hard on people. It's probably happened to my wife if she, if she would tell me. I just have a hard face at it because I already know the end is coming. I'm very grateful that he gave us the opportunity to have the truth about, about what's going on, the meet and do season. I'm grateful that he showed us that we have to perform the royal law. And, I think this is how you do it. Okay, mom, can you help her? Oh, mom's not here. I think this is how you do it, daddy, right? Look. Okay, I'm busy. Okay, enough. So I forget what I was saying, but something about Christmas crap. Well, anyways, you can see the behavior of these people even for rejecting this and, and not, not going with what they're doing, even in the Christian church. They get mad. They get mad and they, they are offended. You know, they're <laughs> like your brother won't call you. You know, your your parents won't talk to you because you're doing that which is right. So, well, that's the difference. And they and the whole church right now believes in a nonsensical false salvation. The finished work on the cross, you know, the finished work on the cross is that sacrificial law was added because they made a golden altar, which is the same thing. Okay? Just because it wasn't a cow, this time it's a tree. So they make and a Santa Claus and everything. And an Easter bunny and reindeer. You know? They say, oh, it's not idolatry, but you made a damn Christmas tree song about it. You sing to a tree. It's not an idol. In the song like a prayer. Don't you sing to the Lord? And you sing to a tree too? Crazy, isn't it? The book is already written. So anyways, the northern kingdom of Israel did the same thing. And that's how they were allowed to repent. And the Romans 11 again says, But if the Gentiles go do the same thing that the northern kingdom of Israel does, how much more severity will come to you? 
after you just did this and the son has now paid the price for Israel plus allowed you the comfort of entering into the holy covenant. And you look at that as an unholy thing and it, the Bible tells you you're going to do that. When it says, woe to you that do this, that means they're going to do it. Hebrews. The apostate church is, do not believe a single one of them. Come out of her, my people. For the law having a shadow of the good things to come, like the Sabbath, the good things to come is the millennial reign. So those who believe in his Sabbath will experience his Sabbath millennial reign in the kingdom. Now, isn't it nice somebody went and told you this? Because they're lying to us. I've been a Christian my whole entire life. I've asked the questions. Why? Because God's spirit of grace pokes our heart. It's our conscience. For the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Sacrificial law couldn't do it. It was added as a punishment. That's the finished work on the cross. He became the, 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 the sacrifice to end the sacrificial, sacrificial law, punishment of sin and death law. That's the good news. And then the Gentiles can come in and, and walk in the Holy Covenant. For the law have... Da, 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 da. <clears throat> For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that they worship once... Uh, the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away the sins. See, they're explaining to you. That's gone now. There's no way that that would, that's not to take your sins away. It was a punishment. And they, to enforce obedience. And then so God lightens it, goes back to just the original Ten Commandments, Gives the Gentiles the opportunity and because the northern kingdom of Israel was scattered into the Gentiles. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering, I would not, but, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifice for, for sin thou hast no pleasure. I prefer mercy, not sacrifice. It's the same thing that Yeshua said. Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifices, offerings, and burnt offerings, and offerings for sin thou would not, neither hast thou pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Like it's not the covenants. The covenants are different. The covenants were first. Then sacrificial law was added because of transgression to the covenant. And the pastors can't even figure this out because they refuse to obey. And they have so much pride to tell the truth to a bunch of people they've already lied to and all their pastor buddies, they're going to look like a bunch of idiots in front of them all. Even though the, the ones that they're going to look like idiots in front of are idiots too. Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he can establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yeshua Messiah once for all. If you obey. And every priest standeth daily ministering the offering, oftentimes the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. It also says that Jacob uh, is part of that, his enemies will be his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Them that are sanctified in his word. Your word is truth. I don't pray for the world. I pray for those that you gave me, he says. That I gave your name to and are sanctified in my word and those who hear them. 
John 17. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. After those days. That's the second exodus. And their sins and iniquities will, be re will, will I remember no more. Now where no remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yeshua, by the new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. What do we do? He elevated the law. So now we rebuke sin. We don't stone people. That's sacrificial law. So if an Israelite, uh, like the woman caught in adultery, that she would get stoned. And so would the guy. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our or our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. It's a, this is the covenants of promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. To provoke unto love and good works, which is following the holy covenant. The holy covenants of promise. Not forsaking, here we go, do not forsake the Sabbath assembling of yourselves together. It doesn't say Sabbath. We know what it means. Don't forsake the, the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? Who do you think this is written to? The same people, Jacob and Israel. <coughs> the Christians aren't going to hear this. Meaning, some of them are Christians, but come out of her, my people. The fullness of the Gentiles comes in. They're not going to listen. They're full of pride. They even want to be called Gentiles, you guys. A lot of them. <coughs> Inside there, the lost sheep of the house of Israel are in there. It's going to be required at the pastors and those people's hands, those shepherds. They were supposed to lead them and feed them. This is Ezekiel 34, end days prophecy, terrible day of the Lord. Those who desire the terrible day of the Lord are the ones doing the Christmas tree without any shame. Okay. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, so if we leave the Sabbath gathering willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witness. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. Sanctified in your word, your word is truth. He sanctified himself in his word too. And he gave everything that God told him to say to us. And told, told us to enter into the work of the prophets. Follow his ways. Walk the way I went. That's what he told us to do. They called the, the covenant wherein he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. This is another lesson. You guys will probably, lots of you know if you're still here that the spirit of grace is conviction. And Matthew 12, Yeshua talks to us about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which is grace, and they're calling it the burden of the Lord because the scriptures he's talking about when he's explaining vaguely even, Matthew 12, you will be condemned and justified by the words that come out of your mouth. And that's what's said in 
Jeremiah 23, and God is warning in the latter days, you will consider this perfectly. Don't you say it's the burden of the Lord. They are doing everything this book is saying. Oh, we're saved by favor. We're saved by favor. The finished work on the cross. No. That is the nonsense apostate doctrine. You are saved by entering into the work of the prophets. You're saved by doing the things that you're told to do in this book. And it starts off with the Ten Commandments. It starts off with, thou shalt not sacrifice to Christmas and Easter. Don't fornicate. Don't touch the blood. Don't th eat things with the, with the, that are strangled. And go learn what Moses said about the Messiah being taught in the synagogues every Sabbath. It's right there in Acts 15. The first things the Gentiles need to do. First things. Followed by the second thing. And then the fourth thing. You're always learning. Not lazy people that don't care about God. Not people who covet the ways of this world. I live my life in a crazy kind of way because I'm always, this book is always on my mind. The people are always on my mind. The problems are always on my mind. The crazy prophecy, this is hard to take in for me too, you know. But I'm only telling you people for your own sake so you can even go study it out yourself. So you're warned because then your blood ain't on my hands. That's why I'm doing it, because it's not a very pleasant couple pieces of scripture for me in Ezekiel 2 and 3. I don't want anybody's blood on my hands. That's what the strange thing is, too, because these servants end up judging you in the end. And it's like to the death. And I, I was saying to, I think, Brother Matthew, how do we have such a forgiving heart, put up with the nonsense we have to put up with, getting the truth cross to, to a world that won't listen to us, and we already know that, and then we got to kill everybody when you turn into the 144,000, however he's going to do that. Because the executing of the judgment goes through the 144,000. Yeshua leads the way. That's why he's the king of kings. Yeah. You're going to have a rude awakening, I'll tell you that. So anyway, I'll let you guys go. It's long enough. 